Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about NoSQL. When I heard this term for the first time, I thought, hey, whoever coined this term for the first time is actually a negative person. Why someone will keep a negative name, right? So instead of naming it as Android, you say it's no iOS. I know that sounds weird. Uh, sorry for that poor joke. But the thing is, I thought that that's negative. But then it turned out no SQL is not, it does not mean not SQL. It actually means not only SQL. To understand this better, let's go back to 1970s. Now I know it's way back, it's almost been 52 years now. The thing is, at that point when computers started evolving, we wanted a way to store data, right? Of course we have file system, you can simply open a file and you can store data. But then they were trying to figure out where we can use computers, right? The way we are exploring for blockchain and other technologies, where exactly we are going to use those. In the same way, at that point, it was like, okay, we have computers, let's use it. Where? So they find different solutions, right? We can use computers for maybe for companies' data, for supply chain, for hospitals. And then now we know what's the use case. Let's use the data. Let's store the data. But how? Now, they did a lot of research, right? It took around a lot of years for them to find out the best way to store data. And that's what relational database is, right? So they thought, hey, uh, so we got this great scientist, Dr. Cord, and then he came up with this 12 rules based on which we got this database system, right? And that was relational database basically, where you have tables, right? You have multiple tables which are related to each other. Uh, the actual term of relation came from something else, from maths, but let's keep it there. We have multiple tables and they are related, right? So there were primary keys, foreign keys, and different stuff, right? Now the basic idea of relational database is it actually provides you something called uh, asset properties, right? Which is this is asset property. It provides you consistency, durability, and all those stuff and important stuff, right? So example, let's say if you do a transaction and it fails in between, it will roll back completely. It's not like you will store half data and half will be undone. So it's awesome. And also at that point, you know, the data storage were very costly. So they were working with this huge amount of data of KBs and they wanted to store this data somewhere. So they thought, hey, why to waste memory, right? Because at that time it was costly. So they wanted to make sure that every data is stored properly and there's no duplication, at least minimum duplication was there. So for that, they achieved something called normalization, right? So we have one NF, two NF, three NF and BCNF. Of course, it's a huge topic to talk about, but it actually creates duration between tables and there's no duplication. That's the end product of that. And it is easier to store. And you can use a special language called SQL, the structured query language to fetch data. Now there were different the RDBMS available in the market, you know, from different companies, from Oracle, from Sun. Then we got open source project like Postgres. So everyone had their own way of implementing it. And there were slight changes in the SQL language. But ultimately the language is same, right? With some tweaks. And it was awesome. So everyone was using SQL. In fact, I started my career with SQL and I was so happy. So SQL basically started around 1970s. It's a very strong language, well tested because it's there from a long time. So it, it becomes a first choice for any of the databases in this world, right? But then there were some issues. You know, when after year 2000, most of the companies, they went online as web 2.0. So instead of storing data only by companies where they have structured data, instead of using only for the internal use, now the, the internet or the database system or the IT in general was available for everyone, even for the common public. And now we wanted to expand it, not just normal data storage. We wanted to store audio, video, files, and maybe uh, unstructured data where you can just push your data, push your forms, now, when you have huge amount of data, and also I'm not just talking about data generated by users, data generated by machines as well. You know, your mobile phones continuously send data to these companies, right? Uh, okay, we can talk about those things later, how they spy on you. But important thing is they are collecting data and they wanted to find a way to store the data. And also about IoT devices, right? We, have, we are moving towards that. So where do you store all this data? right? We got machine learning. For machine learning, you need huge amount of data. So we got this concept of big data, right? Somewhere around uh, 2010. But before that, they wanted to find a way somewhere around 2000 to store data, right? So they did a lot of research and it took them, again, it takes a lot of time to build something new, right? So they came up with a solution where you can store data 
which is not structure. Okay, there's one more thing when it comes to structure. It also about schema, right? What is schema is a stable structure. How many attributes you have and how many columns you will be having, those things. The problem is in SQL, whenever you want to store data, even before you store data, you have to make sure that you have a table structure. You have a schema with you, specific columns, Example, let's say if we talk about employee, employee will have employee ID, employee name, employee salary, employee department. Yeah, if you use normalization, you'll be having a different table for department, but you'll be having a foreign key. If you don't know SQL, that was how it looks like, a normal table. A very simple one, actually. Uh, I'm going with a general example of, of SQL. Now, the thing is, when it comes to uh, this concept here, you need to have a schema ready. But sometimes, you don't know what type of data you'll be getting, right? Uh, that, that was one issue. The second issue is about the scalability. At that point, scalability was not an issue because we were having limited number of users online and they were fetching normal data, not a lot of processing required. But now if you talk about users, we have billions of users getting visit, uh, billions of visits are happening on each website. Maybe per second there are millions of heads. How they are going to handle this huge requirement? Right, so they have to scale up the application. Now, how do you scale uh, application? Basically, you scale the server, right? How do you scale a server? So let's say you have a normal server which has a database system, and now you have a normal configuration. So instead of talking about all those weird configuration, let's talk about normal configuration. Let's say you have a server, i5, 16 GB RAM, one terabyte hard drive, and you're happy, everything is working, but now you are getting more hits. Maybe you're doing some new uh, event and there, there are some sales going on. Now you have more users. So how do you handle those users, right? You have to increase the capacity of your server. How do you do that? So basically you have to do vertical scaling, which is scale up basically where you have to improve your system from i5 to let's say i9, from 16 GB RAM to let's say 64 GB RAM and maybe improving hard drive as well. Okay, not that's not how you configure server, but just to keep it simple. That is vertical scaling. Now the problem is there's a limit for that, right? Till what point you will go because we don't have a powerful CPU apart from i9, of course, when I'm talking about laptops, but of course we have server CPUs, but there's a limit for any any kind of CPU. But what if you can just go for horizontal scaling where you don't, you're not dependent upon one server. You can have multiple servers and small servers, right? i5, 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 multiple machines, right? The advantage would be it is easier to scale because you're scaling out. Right, so in future, if you want more servers, just add more machines, right? It's that beautiful. So how do you solve this problem? And that's where they came up with this technology called NoSQL databases. Now, why I'm saying databases, because we don't have one solution. We have multiple solutions. There are different types of uh, databases available there. Now, basically different companies came up with different databases there, and you can see the list here, and everyone was happy. They were using their own, but then of course we have to come on some ground, right? We have to use some open source solution. So of course we got some open source solutions as well there. Now by saying all those things, we missed one point here. Why the name NoSQL? Of course we mentioned it is not only SQL. Does that mean NoSQL also supports SQL? And the answer is yes. Because initially, yes, they wanted to have a different name like NoSQL because now we don't have to use SQL. But later on, they figured out that SQL is the best language. They have some amazing concepts. And also we can use those things in our databases. And that's why they said not only SQL because this databases support SQL, but also something else. In fact, few databases, they have their own SQL language. Like in Cassandra, we have CQL. Now there's one more thing. Uh, if you're thinking RDBMS is not scalable horizontally or scaling out, Actually, nowadays we have some new technologies coming up, which is solving that issue as well. But then, you know, that's how technology evolved, right? We have a cycle uh, going on. So what is NoSQL? So basically NoSQL is type of databases where it has flexible structure, it is scalable, and it will be fast. Now, why is fast? Because in NoSQL, we don't use normalization. We store data as it is, right? Because in SQL databases, the main focus is how will you store it? because we have SQL to fetch data in anyhow, right? But in NoSQL databases, the main idea is store data in such a way that it will be easier for them to access. So let's say what if you want to search something, because now we don't have a normal data, right? We don't have 10 rows, 20 rows, which have, we have huge amount of data to search from. So it will be easier to search. And that's why the focus is on reading, not on writing. In RDBMS, the main focus was how will you store it properly? In NoSQL databases, the idea is to how will you fetch it fast and easy way? So basically we have different types of uh, databases in NoSQL. Uh, the first one is key value. In fact, that's the main idea of uh, NoSQL databases, right? Where you will be having a key and a value. 
key, right? fast access. Now, how do they do it? So let's say we have a key and we have a value, key value, key value, key value, key value. The thing is, you want to say, that's not what I want to store, right? It looks good for the examples, but in real-life applications, you have a huge amount of data to store, right? That's right. This value here can be a normal value. It can also be a JSON data, right? It can, all, it can be anything, right? It can be uh, multiple columns. That's your choice, right? That's the flexibility which you get, right? So you get a key value, a, a value can be anything. Now, when I say it will be faster, it does that with the help of a concept of hash, right? So if you want to search a data from millions of key values, you don't actually go in a linear format. You don't have to go for each and every row. You can simply use the hash to go to the particular point, right? Uh, that's the beauty. So that is key value. Now, just because I mentioned document, we have another type here, which is document type, or you can say document databases. So here, what you do is the value here is actually a JSON document. Every time you store data, you actually store a JSON object in a binary format, of course, but you actually deals with JSON. The advantage would be whenever you want to fetch data, you get, you got JSON, you send that JSON from the middle tier or from the server to the client, right? Because on the client side, you will be having maybe React application or Android application, which needs a JSON data, which is directly coming from the server or actually from the database. There's no processing required in between. It's so fast, right? Uh, that's the beauty, right? So that's where we have document type, uh, document databases. In fact, uh, this is not just one video. We have a series of videos coming up and we'll be explaining these things on machine. Now, since we have mentioned about the machines, uh, we will be using different softwares. So for key value, let's say we have option of Redis. Document type, we have, let's say, MongoDB. Uh, we have two more types, right? For that, we, can, we, can, we will be using examples as well. And then we'll be doing that on, instead of installing those softwares on your machine, I will show you the steps as well. But what if we can use a cloud service? We can directly use database service and we can create our applications there. You don't have to install softwares on your machine. And that's where we will be using this application called Data Stash. In fact, the idea for this video is sponsored by Data Stash. So we'll be using their application because it's beautiful. So don't worry, it's not just one video. We have series of videos and we'll be explaining these things with examples. So we got two types, right? We got key value, we got document database. In fact, we have two more. The first one is tabular databases. Now, I know we moved away from tables in RDBMS and now we are talking about tables again. The thing is, see, if we talk about tables, we are focusing more on columns here, not on rows. Okay, so here we actually work with tables, but reverse the thing. You don't actually focus on rows, you actually focus on the columns. It will be easier to fetch. Of course, we'll focus more on this in the upcoming videos. There's also a concept of wide column where you can have one key and the row and the value will have multiple columns. Now, it looks similar to the table formats, but the thing is in tables, we have a normal structure, right? We'll be having all the columns. So if you enter a new row, you have to make sure that you fill all the columns. That's not compulsory in this uh, wide column thing. Only those columns will be required based on what data you're passing. And then the fourth one. Now, if you talk about all those things, nowhere we are talking about relations, right? But sometime you actually need a database where you will find relations. Think about Facebook. Now, when you go to Facebook, in fact, the next type is actually made by Facebook. So they were facing this issue because they have so many users and then we are connected, right? We have friends. So I have, let's say, 10 friends and then my, my friend will be having some 10 friends. So those are the connections. So they created something called a graph database. Now, graph database is actually... Uh, will be having nodes and edges. Every node will be like a data, like you. And the relation between you and your friend is this edge. That is graph database. And for that, we can use Neo4j. And for tabular, we can use Cassandra. So those are the some amazing applications available to explore. Now, apart from this, we have one more thing coming up, which is multi-model, where you're not specific to one particular model for database. In your application, you can use multiple models together. But the focus would be to, to work on this four and we'll be using that in the examples and we'll be doing that on data stash. So you can, you, you can find a link for data stash, make sure that you register so that we'll be doing the examples directly on this application. So that's it from this video where we talked about NoSQL. So here we are not focusing on the tabular structure. We are not focusing on the relations. We are not focusing on SQL. We are using a database which is flexible in terms of structure. It will be scalable and faster. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.